Yes, Lord. Yes, Jesus. Hmm. As you inhale, allow God to breathe into you. Yes, Lord. We thank you, Lord God, for once again, Lord God, another Bible study, Lord God. Another Bible study, Lord God. Two years. Started in Genesis, now we're in Jeremiah. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord God. Yes, Lord God, continue to show your favor on your people. Lord, we know it's all kind of things going on right now in the world, Lord. But we know that you are still in control. Yes, Lord God. Breathe into us. Yes, Jesus. Mm. Yes, Lord. Mm. Breathe into us, Lord. Lord, I ask that you would just come on to this call tonight, Lord God, and do what you do best, Lord God. Restore us, Lord God. Forgive us for our sins, knowing and unknowingly. Lord God, give us that part, Lord God, that we're lacking. Lord God, we need you, Lord God. We need everything you have for us. We thank you, Jesus. Lord God, those that tried to come against us, Lord God, we just ask, Lord God, you will continue to keep a soft heart in us towards them. Lord God, you said no weapon that is formed against us shall prosper. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Lord God. Lord God, us all these storms and these floods, Lord God, that's going through all these different cities, Lord God. Lord God, we just pray now, Father, that you will continue to save those, Lord God, that's calling out on your name, Lord God. Those that's not calling your name, Father God, we ask that you will give them a second chance. Give them that chance, Father. To call upon your name. As we pray for those that we don't even know, Father God. I ask, Lord God, that the Spirit of God will reach them. And will cause them to know that you are Lord. And Lord alone. We thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Please worship him with me. Hallelujah. Give yourself unto God now. Lord, we ask that you come on to us now, Lord God. Come into each and every home, Lord God. In the car, Lord God. On the workplace, Father God. Come into our spirits and lift us up, Lord God. Lift us up, Lord God, from that place of shame, that place of hurt, that place of betrayal, that place of having lack of confidence, Lord God. Yes, Jesus. Mm. Yes, Lord God. Our life is in your hands. The enemy cannot do nothing unless you allow it. We give ourselves away to you, Lord. Take us, Father. Hmm, glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. You're worthy. You are worthy to be praised, Lord God. Oh, yes, Lord. Yes, Father God. We sit up on the porch, Father. We sit back and we watch. We see, Lord God. We hear, Lord God, those things that are said about us. But yet, Lord God, when they throw those daggers, when the enemy comes in like a flood, you have already raised a standard 
And we thank you, Lord God. Glory, 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 glory. We worship you, Lord God. Yes, Lord God, we worship you. We thank you, Lord God. Every angel that's assigned to you will be released tonight. I release the angels now for the healing of the body and the healing of the mind. Yes, Lord God, use us. We decrease as you increase in our life. Fill us up, Lord God, right now with your spirit. We give ourselves unto you now, Lord God. We enter in right now, Father God. All distractions, Lord God, are ceased. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Worship him. Worship him. Yes, Lord. You said every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that you are God. More things are to come in this world because of the disobedience of the people. Are you on the right or wrong side of God? Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. There's so many out there that know what you're supposed to be doing, and you're not doing it. Therefore, terror has consumed you. Terror has had its way with you. You must, I repeat, you must cry out to God. As the message last week was to cry out to God. You must go back and listen to the message. You have to cry out to God. Glory to Jesus. Some people have seen where God has brought you from. Don't really understand. Worship him, worship him, worship him. You don't know my story. You don't know why I do this week after week when I'm tired. Had no rest. You don't know my story. How many of you have been at your lowest point? You don't know my story. But God, you don't know my story. But God, you don't know my story. But God. Some of you may think I'm crazy, some that know me, that I'm always listening to gospel, I'm always in my word, but you don't know my story. I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for God. If it wasn't for God, I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't have a positive outlook on negative things. But you don't know my story. Grateful she can tell it. For no more shall the shadows come in. You don't know the story. How many of you out there that have a story? People don't understand your praise. 
They don't understand the things that you have went through. The things that you're going through. They don't know your story. Only thing I can say is, but God. I have to continue to push. I have to continue to be faithful and obedient to what God has said. Even when I don't feel like it. You know why? Because not only do you know, but don't know my story. You don't know. Being on the other side of disobedience, you won't have a story. Get to that place of worship. Some of you want a word from God. You don't even pick up the Bible. You don't need to wait on a prophet or a prophet to give you a word. Pick the Bible up. You don't need your preacher to preach a word to you. Pick your Bible up. He's going to confirm that thing. Stop depending on people. Come on, people. Let every man be a liar. But God, you don't know my story. Glory to Jesus. Listen, some folks will walk out on you. Some folks will give up on you. Some folks don't even trust you. But guess what? Continue to obey God because they don't know your story. for the favor of God or are you looking for the favor of men? Men will always always men will always get you to a place where you will find disappointment. Always. Trust and believe. Let's listen to a couple more songs before I get into the message. I want you to get your spirit right. Jesus. 
We enter in, Lord God. Yes, Lord. Heal, touch, correct, and guide, and teach, Lord God. We're here, Lord God. We need you. We need you, Lord. The world needs you, Father. Our leaders need you, Lord God. Place something in their spirit, Lord God, to praise you. Place someone around them, Lord God, that they look up to. That they will look up to, Lord God, and listen to. Father, we need you as a nation, Lord God. Father, we need you. Protect me from my enemies. I know that you will rescue me as I rescue you. You will keep me. You are Jesus. You're my strong tower, Jesus. My strength is God. that place of worship. You can hear things like you never heard things before. Your ears will begin to tingle. Your mind will begin to wonder. our focus back on Jesus. Shall we remove your focus for just a little while off of money, off of problems, issues that you may have. Please get your mind off of all those things and get your mind on Jesus. And things will begin to turn around for you in your life. It all starts with the way you think, the way you perceive things. We all gonna go through, but it's how you see it. Your condition is not your permanent position. Jesus. We thank you, Lord God. Into that place of meditation. Close your eyes and just listen. Is anybody glad in the room for Jesus? Is there anybody? Worship is the part of the service that will usher your spirit into a different place. Some of you felt haughty coming on the call. Had a spirit of being rushed. Anxiety. But after worship, you would begin to feel lighter. You would be able to focus more. Get your mind on Jesus. Lord, we enter into your gates with thanksgiving, into your courts with praise. We praise you now, Lord God. 
Worship you, Father God. Who is the name of you are Lord? worthy to be praised, Jesus. Oh, was a That your people shall we repent tonight. Shala, Borojo Boki. We bind up every witch of your warlock. His name is Jesus. Every demon that's on assignment to kill or destroy the thing that you have started, I bind it up now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Hello, lights. I speak to those dormant places in your body, in your mind, in your spirit, and I call them to rise up now. In the name of Jesus. Everything that's unlike God will be canceled in the name of Jesus. God will make a way. I've seen it and he will. Yes, Father. Oh, we worship you right now, Lord God. I'm going to turn this down just a little bit. I'm going to get started in the message tonight. Then we're going to go back to worship towards the end. And I'm going to allow the Holy Spirit to have his way to see if he wants me to speak to some of you all. God will make a way. Back in the book of Jeremiah. I first... would like to say I'm happy I'm glad and I thank God that you're here tonight to be able to hear and see this broadcast 
That means you have another chance. I'm speaking to those that's not on the right track. But you have another chance to make it right with your father. And for those that don't believe, those that are struggling, I pray now that the Lord will give you, will show you, will send to you someone that can be a witness for you. Because the God that I serve, the God that I serve is a just God, is a merciful God. I don't know about the gods that you serve, but I know the God that I serve is always on time. His delay is not his denial. And his no means no. You shall seek his perfect will, not his substantial will or his imperfect will or not what you want, but seek his perfect will. Yes, we've heard the scriptures that he will give you the desires of your heart. But know this. Your desires may not line up with his desires. You may see something that looks good to you. That's wrapped in red paper. That looks sweet, that tastes sweet, and it's not good for you. It can be very, very dangerous. So what would God want for you? How do you know that? By standing this word. By listening. Taking heed and obeying. We've been over two parts of Jeremiah. Chapter 1 and chapter 2. Now we're in chapter 3. And as I said a couple weeks ago. Jeremiah was called to a stubborn people that wouldn't listen. But this part three is very significant to me and dear to me because the book of Jeremiah is still part of the what? Not the New Testament, but the Old Testament. So if it's a part of the Old Testament, which means they dealt with the Father, which was God. We today deal with what? Jesus and the Holy Spirit. But back then, we still know it as it is today is God is Jesus. And the Holy Spirit is all in one. Hello, likes. The Father is the Son. But the Son wasn't on the scene at that point. At that appointed time, the Son wasn't there. Hello, likes. They spoke on God, the wrath of God, the mercy seat. Jesus didn't come on the scene until he was born of the Virgin Mary, putting that, that, that cart, I don't want to call it the, the, the manger that was pushed down the Nile River. I want to call it a, a baby boat. He was placed in a baby boat and was pushed to destiny. And was found by whom? Pharaoh's daughter. So everything that you're going through right now, it may not seem as though you're going down that Nile River. It may not seem as you're on that straight road. You may have a little turn here, a little turn there, a bump here. But it's all still for the good. Trust and believe. But now, Now, let's speed up this little train. We deal mostly now with what? What do you hear people talk about? The Holy Spirit. The Spirit of God. The Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit. As I said before, Jeremiah was not called to bring the people, to bring you to salvation. But to, to direct you, to direct them to what? Listen and obey the inspired word of God. We also spoke about Jeremiah having a tongue to speak. 
And that tongue that he spoke, it what? Cut some folks. Why? Because they didn't want to listen. They didn't want to hear. They thought they was on the right track. Or the ones that knew they was on the wrong track didn't want to be on the right track because it was boring. How many of you will love to continue to do what you want to do because it feels good to your soul? But the spirit still fights against the soul. The soulless realm is just that. It's all by itself. It's selfish. But the spirit wars against that soul. So what are you going to do? Are you going to continue to fight? Are you going to give up? Are you going to reason? Are you going to ask God to show you the way? He spoke a tough message to these people. And the Lord had told him they wasn't going to listen. But guess what? He still spoke his message. My scripture tonight. If you will. Is going to be out of Jeremiah chapter 8 verse 3. And it reads. And death shall be chosen rather than life by all the residue of those who remain of this evil family, this evil nation. Who remain in all the places to which I have driven them, says the Lord of hosts. My subject tonight, my topic tonight, how to get God's attention back on America. The world today, as I've been speaking on the last couple of weeks, it's a mess right now. And why is it a mess, people? It's a mess due to our disobedience. Because of the rejection of Christ. Because of the wanting to do it your way. Not wanting to listen. Your way didn't work. So let's try something new. As some of us know the scripture in Isaiah 43, 18 and 19, do not remember the former things. Stop trying to go back. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? Some probably wouldn't know it. Because you want to live in the past. You don't want anything in the future. You're okay where you are. You're stagnant. There's no current flow in your life. You listen to no one but yourself. It talks about those who possess, profess to be wise, but they're not. You don't listen. Listening to someone isn't a form of weakness. So just get that out of your mind. It's not a form of weakness. You just got to make sure you're listening to the right person. Jeremiah 6, verse 10 and 17 says, To whom shall I, Jeremiah, speak and give warning that they may hear? Remember, God told them to speak his word, but we already know that they wasn't going to listen. Same thing with Pharaoh and Moses. God told him to go and tell Pharaoh, to what? Release my people. Tell them to let my people go. God already knew that he wouldn't. But he still wanted who? Moses to what? Be obedient and still go. Time after time after time. Some of us would have gave up after the second time. With God, we must be persistent in this walk. You must be persistent in doing the things of the Lord. He's asking you a question, Jeremiah is, and I'm asking you the same question. Will you take heed? Will you listen to the word of God that is coming out of my mouth? 
Will you obey his instruction if it's given to you? Those that have heard his voice in the past, have you obeyed? Scripture says, behold, the ears are uncircumcised. Never brought into covenant with God or consecrated to his service. They never intended on listening, as he said. But guess what? The test wasn't just for them. It was for who? Jeremiah. The test is not just for Jeremiah. It's for you. It's for myself. Hello, lights. And they cannot hear or obey. Behold, the word of the Lord has become to them a reproach and the object of their scorn. They have no delight in it. Come on, somebody. 17 says, and I also set watchmen over you saying, hear and obey the sound of the trumpet. But they said, we will not listen or obey. Are you saying the same thing? You may not have said it, but your actions speaks louder than the words. You was told. It was trumpets that were sent your way. It was a sound, a voice from a prophet, from a preacher, from a teacher, from a prophetess. Somebody told you. Come on, somebody. The scripture I'm talking, man, the scripture that I'm talking to you about is not just a scripture written in this book just for us to read, but it's a scripture for you to take heed to, to grab hold to that thing, put it in your pocket, repeat it, place it on your heart. Come on, somebody. Man, it should bring you to a place of curiosity, a place of interest, and a place of saying, okay, God, if I obey this one thing, what is it that you can do for me? Guess what his answer would be? It may be many more, but this one I'm going to tell you, it's going to be that he woke you up this morning. That's the biggest, the hugest miracle you can ever ask for. You woke up this morning, so that means you have another day to get it right. But this next scripture, again, is another scripture that it should bring you to a place of curiosity. It should arouse something in you. That scripture is Jeremiah 6 and 19. Hear, O earth. He's talking to the earth. Remember last week I spoke on the scriptures concerning the floods. Hear, O earth. Behold, I am bringing evil upon this people. The fruit of their thoughts, their schemes and devices, because they have not listened and obeyed my words. And as for my law, they have rejected it. Wow. So here we are asking, why is God allowing this to happen? All these innocent people, these babies, are dying. Okay? I understand that. But first of all, as I said quite often before, some know, some may not. We don't die. We're going to live in, in eternity somewhere. But you have a choice. And who don't believe in hell? Hey, don't wait till that last moment when you can come up, conjure up in your mind, try to reach out to someone at the last minute and say, wait, I believe now that now may be too late. But the Lord is saying, but you trust the lying words. 
that cannot profit you. Who are you believing in? Who are you listening to? If it's not the word of God, it's a lie. But this thing I did command of them, God said, listen to and obey my voice and I will be your God and you will be my people. That's what he's saying. And walk in the whole way that I command you, that it may be well with you. That's what he's saying. The word is not too far off, as we heard before in the past, in Deuteronomy 28. It's not strange to you, but it's up to you whether or not you want to listen and obey. But God said they would not listen to him or obey him. They would not bend their ear. But follow the counsels and the stubborn promptings of their own evil hearts and minds. And they turned their backs and went in reverse instead of forward. How many of us are going to get to the point where we say, for God I live, for God I die? Because it wasn't working for me this way. It wasn't working for me yesterday. It wasn't working for me last year. So now you have to make a decision. What would your decision be? Will you continue to go through what you're going through? And I'm not just talking about the people that's broke, that's sick, that's confused, that has anxiety. That has depression. I'm talking to the ones that think they got it all. I'm talking to the ones that's living that life of prosperity. The one that has two and three and four boyfriends and girlfriends. You may think the shoe fits right now. But I say one thing to you. Keep on living. Keep on shutting God out. Keep on putting him second. Keep on not listening to those whom God has sent your way. Keep staying busy. Stay to the point where you don't have time for God. Stay that way. And it's going to be a whirlwind that comes your way. It's going to sweep you off of your feet. And you're going to wish that you listen. In my closing tonight, I want to close with a passage of scripture that I think will be fit what I'm talking about tonight. And it is Jeremiah 8, verse 20. Keep on not listening. Keep on having a busy life. And what else? You will be rejected. I know some of you have heard, well, God is a God of grace. God is a God of mercy. But we also know that God comes down and he brings a sword to divide those. But Jeremiah 8, 20 says, the harvest is past. The summer has ended. And the gathering of fruit is over. Yet we, you, are not saved. Scripture says this was the voice of of the people. The summer has ended, people. He's saying the summer has ended. This is it. And the gathering of the fruits is over. There's no more gathering for you that disobey. There's more, no more gathering for you that don't listen. It is over. The summer has ended for you. Yet, you are not saved. 
and you're asking why, what happened? I've done this, I've done that. Don't you want to hear, well done, my good and faithful servant? But you're too busy. You don't listen. You don't obey. You remember months ago I spoke on listening and hearing is two different things. You can listen to whatever I'm saying right now. You can hear what I'm saying right now. But guess what? Hearing me is not the same as listening. Listening is what? Taking action. Will you take action tonight? Your summer has ended. The harvest is past. But the Lord is saying to you, for I am with you, says the Lord. To save you, I will make a full and complete end of all the nations to which I have scattered you. Come on, somebody. But I will not make a full and complete end of you. But I will correct you and measure with judgment and will in no sense hold you guiltless or leave you unpunished. Now, what does that mean to you? He will correct you and measure. Correcting and bringing you home is two different things. Some things are unto death. Blasphemy against the Holy Spirit cannot be forgiven. But what I'm saying to you is this. Accept the punishment and measures. It may not be a punishment and you think, okay, I've been through this. It's over now, God. When am I going to be set free from this here bondage? He may decide to punish you in measure. It may be a course over a month, a course over a year, a course over years. Why is that? Maybe because he looked at you as Paul. He had to place a thorn in your flesh because he knew if he let you too loose, you'll get too out of hand. So guess what he do? He pressed down on you. He allowed you to get discomfort. You'll be uncomfortable. You won't even know whether you're coming or going sometimes. Because that way he can get your attention. That way he can get you to cry out to him. Not to her, not to him, but to him. To him. He that's in you is greater than he is in the world. Bring out the best of you. Stop allowing people to bring out the worst in you. Reverse the curse. Hello, lights. Hello, lights. We, we have someone that want to um, get on here. Come here, buddy. Come here. Okay. His name is Joshua Caleb. Caleb Joshua. And he's going to be taking over pretty soon. Can you guys see him? Caleb? <laughs> okay, I can't hardly, I can't get him up. Here he is. But Lord, we thank you for giving me this short but to the point word tonight. And I ask that you will have some to listen to last week's message and the week before that, Jeremiah part one and two. I believe that we're in a place right now where God has allowed so much to happen because he loved us enough for us to cry out to him again. And to get God's attention again, we must worship him. We must cry out to him. We must obey him. And listen to the ones that we have sent. John chapter 5 explains it to us. 
is it at? John 5, I believe it's verse 34. I got to read this to you. you. You have to listen. That's the problem right now with us. We don't listen. John 5, verse 30. I am able to do nothing from myself, independent of my own accord, but as, only as I am taught by God, and as I get his orders, even as I hear, I judge. I decide as I am bid to decide, as the voice comes to me, so I give a decision, and my judgment is right, just righteous, because I do not seek or consult my own will. I have no desire to do what is pleasing to myself, my own aim, my own purpose, but only the will and pleasures of the Father who sent me. Now watch this. Same chapter, St. John 5, verse 38. And you have not his word, his thoughts, living in your hearts, because you do not believe and adhere to, to and trust in or rely on him whom he has sent. You must trust the person whom God has sent to you. Then it says, this is why you do not keep his message living in you because you do not believe in the messenger whom he has sent. Why don't you? For one, it goes back to you're not wanting to listen to anyone but yourself. But no, someone, everyone is appointed to someone else. So if you're not studying to show yourself approved, you might want to listen to someone else until you get to that point. But even if when you get to that point where you're thinking you're all of that, we're never all of that, none of us. We always have someone that's going to be higher than us, that can teach us, that can correct us. Now look at 1939 says, actually. You search and investigate and pour over the scriptures diligently because you suppose and trust that you have eternal life through them. And these very scriptures testify about me. And still you are not willing but refuse to come to me so that you might have life. So here it is. You had a man or a woman of God that came to you and brought a word to you. You don't believe in them. You don't believe what they said. But you find yourself searching the scriptures and finding out everything they said was true about him. But yet you still don't obey. Come on, somebody. We're going to obey tonight, right? Because God's going to make a way in your life. God will make a way in your life. God is doing it for you. God will make a way. He will. Lord, we thank you, Lord God, tonight. We thank you, Lord God, for this message. We ask, Lord God, that you will allow your spirit to be free, Lord God, and myself. Allow your people to be receptive, Lord God, to what you're saying, what you're saying. Lord God, and if you choose, Lord God, to use me to prophesy tonight, Lord God, you do so. I'm here, I'm willing, and I'm able to speak what thus said the Lord tonight. I thank you, Lord God. God will make a way. The other ways are already made. That thing that you're waiting on, that thing that you're seeking, that thing that you're asking him to do, is already done, but he's waiting on you. Yes, Lord. Hey, glory. He knows what you need. He knows what you've been feeling. I bind up the spirit of depression right now and oppression. Those that's trying to suppress yourself into a place of 
bondage. What is bondage? What is bondage? Bondage can come in different forms. Bondage is going into debt over your head. And guess what that will do? That will take you and place you into a, a box. That will put you into a box that you don't think you can get out of. But guess who done that? You did that. But I pray that God will give you wisdom. Wisdom on your finances. Wisdom on waiting. And wisdom on asking. As the word says, out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, his word will be established. I ask that you don't just go and make a decision on your own because you want something. But you will seek three other people. Three other saints, three other God friend people for a decision. Let's stop trying to do things on our own. And if you can't find anyone to ask to help you with your decision, maybe you don't need it. God will make a way. She tried it for herself, and I tried it for myself. Yes, Lord. You make a way. allow him to. The choice is yours. Let's choose to worship. Let's choose to worship him. Listen, you may not even have a praise in you, but a voice is coming. It's going to be a still voice that comes to those that worship, those that listen, those that obey. Choose to worship. This is the last song of the night. Choose to worship him. Please make your mind up tonight to worship. Is that your voice calling me into that secret place to be? My heart is calling for soul with thee. I choose to worship. Do I have anybody in here tonight that chooses to worship? Sometimes it gets bad. 
We're desperate for you, Lord. Listen. He's healing you. Why don't you worship? And I'm literally a living witness. Come on, I need everybody in here to help me do it right now. Come on. He's healing me. He's healing me. I'm going to worship. Come on, I need He's to healed me. I had rhabdomyositis. They gave me three days to live. I was healed in a month. I can't lay here and die. I got to seek after him. Let him know that you're not going to die in that situation. But you're going to rise yourself up. You're going to live and not die. I'm coming to you wounded tonight. I'm coming to you right now. I need your presence in my life. I'm gonna worship, yes, I am. worship him. Worship him. Everything that you're seeking after, he has it. He has the power for you. Worship, worship, worship. Worship him, worship him. This gets God's attention. It's your worship. You have a choice. Worship him, worship him, worship him. Yes, Lord. We speak total healing in the name of Jesus. Receive your healing now, Father God. We need you like never before, Lord God. We need your manifestation of the healing to touch our bodies and our minds. There's someone that had an issue with the back of the head, some type of a pain going in and out, a headache. The Lord is healing you now in the name of Jesus. Worship, worship, worship. Worship brings the Spirit of God unto you. I choose to worship, do you? Do you choose to worship? Woof, thank you, my brother. Woof, I love you, man. Yes, Lord, we thank you. We worship you, Father. Oh, yeah, God, we worship you. We worship you, Lord God. Oh, you're worthy to be praised, Father God. Oh, we lift up our souls, Lord God, to you. We give you our mind. We hand over our mind to you, Lord God. Lord God, we are nothing without you, Father. Lord God, we need everything, Lord God, you have for us, Lord God, right now in this season. Not yesterday, Lord God, not tomorrow, but now. Lord God, some may not make it tomorrow, Lord God. We need you now. We need to make sure that we are saved now. Lord God, we repent, Lord God. We ask for forgiveness of our sins. Lord, we need you, Lord God. Lord, we don't even really know where the next flood is going to hit. There's so many innocent people dying, Lord God. Babies that are dying, Lord God. So they're leaving this place called earth, Lord God. Yes, we know they're coming home, Lord God. But we still are missing people, Lord God, in action. Lord, we ask that everyone, Lord God, that you bring home, Lord God, will be saved. I ask, Lord God, that you will send someone to them, Lord God, to speak the word in their spirit for they can accept you as their personal savior. Those on this call that's not saved, I ask that you will just accept them as your personal savior. Renounce Satan as your friend, as your father. Renounce them. Know that Jesus died for you and rose on the third day and you shall be saved. 
I thank you right now, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God. Lord God, 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 I thank you, Lord God. Lord, I thank you right now, Father God, that those that don't understand, Lord God, I worship, Lord God. They don't know our story. But we thank you, Lord God, that your healing power has reached us tonight. We just have to continue to believe and trust in you. We got to continue to grab faith by the neck and squeeze it. We're going to thank you, Lord God, that addiction I bind up right now in the name of Jesus. We put it into that bottle. We set it up and throw it out into the sea. We thank you, Lord God, right now in the name of Jesus. The tongue, the cigarette taste, I bind it up now in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. Relationship. Those that had an argument today. The Lord says to go and ask for forgiveness. Go and say you're sorry. It's not about them. It's about you. He's working something out in you. Yes, Lord. Glory to Jesus. Yes, Lord. Hmm. Yes, Lord. Hmm. Hmm. Yes, Jesus. We got to continue to stay on track with God. And I hope, I know some may have forgotten, but um, last Thursday we was going to have everyone to pray for 10 days starting at noon. Um. To remind yourself, put it in your phone, but every day at noon, pray for at least any time between a minute and five minutes. Just we're praying for this nation, for God to heal our land, for the people to repent for the evil ways, so that He can hear us. And I'm going to open up the floor now for those that may have prayer, for those that. Not say for those that may want to give a testimony. We're going to open up the floor for the next five, ten minutes. So um, you're welcome to speak. Yes, Myra. Hey, Myra. Father, we thank you right now, Lord God. We come before you, Lord God, as we have been tonight, Lord God. And we just ask, Lord God, that all of us on this line, Lord God, we will reach and stretch out our spirit towards Myra, Lord God. And every situation, Lord God, that she has spoken tonight, financially, Lord God, that this operation would only go well, Lord God, not just because of the doctor's hands, Lord God, but because of your spirit upon their hands. Lord God, we thank you, Lord God, and financially, Lord God, that everything will be set in place, Lord God. Everything will work itself out accordingly, Lord God, as your will, and your will is not to see us struggle, Lord God. But I thank you right now, Lord God, that heaven has met earth tonight, and Lord God, everything that's been spoken, Lord God, it will do, and it will not come back void, Lord God. It will accomplish everything that you have said. Even this prayer tonight for Mary, Lord God, we thank you now. And we just give it all over to you. In Jesus' mighty name, I declare and decree it to be so. Amen. 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 Anyone else? All right. If not, we'll end it. Father, we thank you right now, Lord God, for this call, Lord God. As we... In this call, Father, we just thank you, Lord God, that we were never, ever, ever would want you to leave us, Lord God. Because without you, Lord God, we're helpless. We're hopeless. Lord God, we would be in the hands of the enemy. 
But Lord God, as we're in this call, but not your presence. Father, just thank you, Lord God, that everyone that's under the sound of my voice, Lord God, will have a, a tingling ear, Lord God. They will hear things differently, Lord God. They will see things, Lord God, with a different set of lenses, Lord God. We thank you now in the name of Jesus that they will never be the same, that every angel that is assigned to them, Lord God, those sleeping angels will be awaking, Lord God, and we thank you, Lord God, they will guide them, they will teach them, they will direct them into the right places, into the right hands because of your grace and because of your mercy. And Lord God, we thank you that obedience, Lord God, has been spoken tonight to some that will awaken the spirit in that person. We thank you, Lord God. We give you the praises. We give you the honor, Lord God, because you are worthy to be praised. In Jesus' name I pray and say amen. 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 Javon, what's up, my brother? Showtime. All right. I'm going to... Uh, in this call tonight and I just um, hope that some of you guys will go back and listen to the last two messages let's see wow yeah woof man brother and this is the first time you've been on too God got something for you man just turn it around Raheem Oh, I'm sorry, man. I, we normally put the number out here, too. It's um, 641-715-3580. And the code is 805-700. Sooner or later, it's going to turn in your favor. Remember in the beginning, God said, obey the call and he will give us and show us his all. Remember Raheem when that prophet called me and told me that um, he has, the Lord has angels assigned. And those angels that are assigned to me will be angels of action. He was giving me angels to bind up. The brokenhearted, to heal, to release finances, but it was going to hit me first. Everything that he said has came to pass. And it's a blessing. But he said, as it hit me, as I speak the word out, it's going to hit everyone else out here. So I believe that you will receive what you need from the Lord. Yep, that's him, Carlton. Yep. So we're going to end... Just remember to go back and look at next week's or last week's message and the week before. But um, love you all. And I will see you on the call next week. All right. All right, Rod, I'll call you after this.